In this video, we're going to talk about kinematics, particularly the formulas that you'll be using when you're studying this chapter in physics. Kinematics has to do with motion. This could be motion in one direction, such as along the x-axis, or motion in two dimensions. In that case, that will be along the x and the y-axis. Now, one of the first concepts that you need to be familiar with is something called displacement. I'm just going to write D for displacement. Displacement along the x-axis is delta x, which is the change in position, which is the final position minus the initial position along the x-axis. Now, in addition to horizontal displacement, you also have vertical displacement, dy which is equal to delta y, and that is equal to the final position minus the initial position along the y-axis. So that's displacement. Displacement is a vector. Distance is a scalar quantity. Displacement is basically, you could think of distance but with direction. Next, we have velocity. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So it's d over t. You can also use this formula to calculate velocity in the x direction, the change in x over the change in time. So it's the change in position with respect to time, or displacement over time. You can also find velocity in the y direction as well. Now the difference between speed and velocity is that speed is the absolute value of velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity. It only has magnitude only, no direction. Velocity is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. So velocity is speed with direction. Speed can only be positive, but velocity can be positive or negative. Distance, the fact that it's a scalar quantity, it can only be positive, but displacement can be positive or negative because it's a vector quantity. Now, just as velocity is the rate of change of displacement over time, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity over time. So it's delta V over delta T. So you can calculate velocity by taking the final position, subtracting it by the initial position, and dividing it by the time between, or the time it takes to go from initial to final. Acceleration is very similar. It's the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. Now, I want to take a moment to show you where you can access more practice problems on kinematics. So if you go to patreon.com slash math science tutor, you'll get access to my Patreon page. And when you sign up, this is what it's going to look like. Now, I do have a lot of subjects, but let's focus on physics. So if you click on physics, you'll get access to my physics videos and the worksheets as well. So you could start with this one, distance and displacement. I have 18 practice problems on that. So the worksheet has all of the practice problems found in the video for those of you who want to print out of all the problems. But this is the video I was talking about, kinematics, where if you want to put those formulas into use, you can access the video here. Now, if you go to YouTube, you can access the free version, which is about 31 minutes long. So if you type in kinematics, organic chemistry tutor, that video should come up. But on Patreon, the full version, it's about an hour and 52 minutes long. So you have way more content here along with the worksheet as well. Now, if you were to click on this video, Let's be honest. and if you go to the description section below, you could find the direct link that'll take you to the full version of the video on Patreon. And also the direct link that will take you to the worksheet.
Now let's go back to my Patreon page. Here's another video. Well, that's a worksheet, but here's another video that has more problems on kinematics. This is kinematics, but in the Y direction, free fall problems. So you may want to take a look at that. There's other physics videos like vectors, projectile motion, relative velocity. And if you're taking a course on physics, eventually you're going to run into these topics like tension force, static friction, inclined planes, pulleys, work and energy, impulse, momentum. You can find all of my extended videos on these topics here. Now, in addition to that, you'll be getting access to my physics final exam review video. The free version on YouTube is about two hours long, but the full version is six hours long with 100 practice problems. And you can also get a printout of the problems as well for those of you who may want to study it in class. As you can see, there's a lot of questions on it. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now you can access many of my extended videos on my YouTube membership program, but if you want access to the worksheets, I only have that currently available on my Patreon membership program. So just something that you should know. Now I'm going to post a few links in the description section below this video, so feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now let's talk about the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity, as well as average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. So first, let's start with average velocity. The formulas that we've been talking about has to do with average velocity, which is displacement over time. Or you could say x final minus x initial over t. If you want to calculate the instantaneous velocity represented by v, if you see a bar on top, that means average velocity, you need to use the limit function. The limit as delta t approaches zero, but for the same formula, delta x over delta t. So let's say if you want to calculate the average velocity along a time interval of one to nine seconds, or let's say two to eight or three to seven, or four to six. Notice the change in time here. It's eight. Here, the change in time is six. The change in time here is four, and delta t is two. If you were to average one and nine, you get five. If you were to average two and eight, you would get five. The same is true for the remaining numbers. So all of these intervals, what they can allow you to do is they can allow you to estimate the instantaneous velocity when t is five, because five is the average of each pair of numbers in those intervals. Now, as delta t gets smaller, as you go from eight to two, this formula becomes a better estimate of the instantaneous velocity. The closer you get to zero, you can use this formula to approximate the instantaneous velocity. The average velocity gets closer and closer to the instantaneous velocity as delta t approaches zero. So let's say if we're to use an interval of 4.9 to 5.1, with five being the center, Delta T in this case is 0.2. Now, if we were to use an interval like 4.99 and 5.01, delta T is very close to zero. It's 0 0.02. So if you were to use these numbers using the average velocity formula, it would give you a very good approximation of the instantaneous velocity because delta T 
is getting closer and closer to zero. So that's how you can use that formula to approximate the instantaneous velocity. It's by using limits and making the interval small as possible, getting close to this number, or the number you want to find the instantaneous velocity at. Now, if you want to calculate the average acceleration, you could use this formula. It's the change in velocity over the change in time. If you want to calculate the instantaneous acceleration, it's the limit as delta t approaches zero, but for the same formula, delta v over delta t. The only difference here is you want to make delta t very small, such that it's close to zero. So for instance, let's say if you want to calculate the instantaneous acceleration at t equals 7. So if you were to use 6.9 and 7.1, that will give you a good approximation. If you were to use 6.99 and 7.01 as t initial and t and final, that will be an even better approximation. So the closer and closer delta t gets to 0, the better the approximation. Another formula that you're going to see in kinematics is displacement is equal to v initial, the initial velocity multiplied by the time, plus one half at squared. Now, if you're wondering where this portion of the formula comes from, it's from this d is equal to vt. Remember that we said velocity is displacement over time. If you multiply both sides by time, you get displacement is velocity multiplied by time. Now this equation works if you have constant velocity. If you have constant acceleration, then this formula applies. For constant acceleration, you have a variation of this formula. So instead of v, you would use the average velocity for constant acceleration where the average is going to be the sum of the initial and the final velocity divided by 2. So here's two common kinematic formulas that you need to be familiar with. Now we said that acceleration is the change in velocity over time and delta v is v final minus v initial. If we multiply both sides by t, we get this. And if we add v initial to both sides, we get v initial plus at is equal to vf. So here's another kinematic formula that you need to be familiar with. v final is equal to v initial plus at. Now the last commonly used kinematic formula is this one. v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad. But here's a question for you. Where does this formula come from? How can we derive that formula? What would you say? What would you do to derive that formula? It turns out that we could use this equation and this one to get this formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation to get t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by t. These will cancel. I get at is equal to v final minus v initial. And then I'm going to divide by a. So we have t is equal to v final minus v initial over a. Now, starting with this formula, I'm going to replace t with what I have here. So I'm going to have d is equal to 1 half v initial plus v final times v final minus v initial over a. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2a.
So on the left, I have 2AD. On the right, the 2 is going to cancel with the 1 half, and A will cancel. So now I can FOIL those two binomials. So I have V initial times the V final, and then V initial times the negative V initial, that's negative V initial squared, and then V final times the V final, that's positive V final squared, and then V final times negative V initial, I'm going to put it right here because these two will cancel and I'm low on space. So bringing everything down, we have 2AD is equal to, I'm going to write this one first, so V final squared and then minus, it has the negative, so minus V initial squared. Now I'm going to add V initial squared to both sides. So I get V initial squared plus 2AD is equal to V final squared. So that's how you could derive that formula from two other kinematics formula. So using those two previous kinematic formulas, we're able to get that one. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2AD. So that's basically it for this video. For those of you who want practice problems on kinematics, uh, feel free to check out the links in the description section below this video. Or you can type in kinematics organic chemistry tutor in a YouTube search box, and you'll get a video that will give you problems on how to use these formulas.